Okay, so Kristen. <laughs> so should we introduce ourselves? So I'm Kristen Jacob, uh, former acting president and vice president of the Marin Chapter of the California Native Plants Society. For a long, long, a long time. Ten, nine years, ten years. Yeah, overlapping with um, and principally program chair and co-chair of the of the plant sale and a few other a few other chores as and when they needed. And I'm Phyllis Faber, long time member of CNPS, and uh, I haven't. I haven't assumed any of those uh, important roles for this chapter. I've been the legislative connection. And uh, so the reason for that is that uh, I've had a long time uh, role in legislative events. I was on the Coastal Commission and so really have seen how land in California is protected, um, how, how the agencies and the laws really strive to protect the land in the face of huge increases in population in California and um, and these increases in population have meant massive development so the things that we care about um, are really hard to hang on to the the, the wildlife the, the beauty um, the resources uh, are, are difficult to protect so my years on the Coastal Commission uh, were, were formative for me I, I saw I saw how uh, the protection could be carried out, was carried out, and and then I b was uh, asked to be on the. How, how would you? How were you on the Coastal Commission? I was a commissioner. And how did that happen? How did that process? Oh, uh, I was appointed uh, by Peter Bear. Oh, okay. Uh, because um, because I had been the co-chairman of the Prop 20 drive in Marin County, and uh, Marin came in with the second highest vote in the state. <clears throat> in support of Prop 20, which created the Coastal Commission. Oh, okay. And yeah. so uh, my reward was to be appointed to the Coastal Commission. So I was a commissioner on the North Central Commission. There were six regional commissions and one state, and so I was on the regional commission. What what were years were what years were that was this? Uh, it would have been 73. Yeah. Through uh, about 81, I think I went off. Uh -huh. I was bumped off by. Uh, <clears throat> Um, Barry Keene became our new state senator, and uh, I had not supported him. I, I was really naive, and I supported Gary Giacomini in his run for state senator, and he lost. Barry Keene won, so you know I was dead beat, uh, and so I was told that I was dead beat. So uh, he let me stay on the regional commission, but when the commission itself uh, appointed me to be the representative on the state commission. That was the dead moment. Yeah. Yeah. So the next day, <laughs> the I was of truth. The, uh, commission. Well, so I think I had the shortest. I've had the shortest tenure on the state commission of anybody. Uh, but anyway, f so I could see. I could see how the laws mattered, uh, and then I was put onto the planning and conservation league board, and uh, I've been on there ever since. Far, far, far too long. But um, but they, their basic uh, tenant is planning. They, they really believe in uh, planning, and uh, so I, I really support the work that they do. So uh, that, that's somehow, that's how I became interested in and, uh, and useful to the Native Plant Society, because um, planning and legislation isn't what they do. They do um, plants. And um, so I... Um, I went back to school, I, I left the consulting business that I was in and went back to school and took all the botany courses at, at Berkeley and uh, then started going out with the Native Plant Society on those wonderful weekend trips and, uh, and became friends with Wilma. And then, um, um, so that, that was a very joyous time in my life, learning the flora of California was really, really very exciting to me and very fulfilling, I, I really loved it. Um, and then I was asked to uh, become the editor of Fremontia, which is the journal for the Native Plant Society. And uh, Marge Hayakawa had done it for 10 years and she, she, she needed to leave. So I took it on and that was uh, scary. But uh, but wonderful, and I really enjoyed doing it. I, it. I mean, like you, you search out who'd be interesting to have as a speaker. Yeah, it's and, a fun, uh, creative process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, and I loved trying to educate the membership of CNPS 
uh, about what was going on around California and uh, what, 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 what were the issues and what was going on. So I did that for 17 years and it, it was fun. I, I think the journal really was effective and useful and uh, I, I, I'm really happy I did that. And also got into publishing books. And so that led to, uh, that led to uh, working with UC Press. But, uh, but basically my, uh, my interest in legislation has what I've contributed to uh, the chapter. And it's been minimal. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> it's been really minimal. <laughs> so talk a little more about some of the other conservation groups in, in Marin, perhaps, and how, how they fit into the... You mean like the Marin Conservation like the League? Conservation and, League and well, Marin has uh, the oldest organization is uh, the Marin Conservation League, and um, they they were started before the Golden Gate Bridge began. Uh, Carolyn Livermore, those families all were well-to-do families and came over and had their summer homes in Marin, and so uh, they they started out working about the uh, on the billboards. Uh, when the Golden Gate Bridge uh, went up in 37, and then after the war, um, there was a huge development pressure here in Marin. It's just, I mean, here it was this beautiful place and uh, some flat land, and so the developers were off and running. And there were lots of billboards, and that's what really offended Carolyn Livermore. She did not like those billboards. So she Really, uh, in, in going after the billboards, she too became interested in planning and could see the virtues in planning. So she and some friends actually hired the first planning staff member for Marin County. Come on. And, uh, and so uh, we've, we've always had good planning in Marin County. Now we had very pro-developer super, super, super supervisors uh, for a while. And uh, in the 60s, and so there has been a lot of development in Marin. I mean, all the uh, Green Bray, um, uh, uh, Marinwood, um, Nevada, all of that um, went forward during that 60s development era. But then um, they really overplayed their hand and had a general plan in the late 60s that um, would have allowed a city of a quarter of a million people in Point Reyes Station. I mean, can you imagine? Uh, highways zooming right straight out to Point Reyes and so on. And the Marinchello? The Marinchello thing came along that then. Was yeah, that was the proposed. massive yeah. development right across the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. So, so there, were, there, were, there was a real change. And, and in the meantime, the people that moved here to Marin loved Marin. They moved here because it was beautiful. So they immediately could see what was happening. And so, like in so many other parts of the world, it was, um, you know, move to a beautiful place and then drop the drawbridge. Yes. <laughs> Become a newbie. Yeah. And, and so that's pretty much what, what has happened here in, in Marin. Um, so, so the question is, um, how, how, does, how does this affect the uh, California Native Plant Society? And, what is the uh, role that they, that they can play now with the county as it is presently uh, constructed? And I think there's an enormous role. I think there's one that they are not picking up on um, and, and could do a lot better. Um, I look at the walks that Wilma gave. She, gave. She, she got a lot of people interested in native plants and, uh, and they learned a lot. I mean, I really, Wilma taught me an enormous amount over the years, and uh, I think that's sorely missed. Um, I think educating people to know the flora is uh, critically important. And then, I think um, just education in general is critically important. The appreciation of, uh, of natural values um, and, and the willingness to work to protect them. I see that as a task that we all could do a lot better uh, in, in doing. And I don't quite know how, but I, I think we ought to sit and give a lot of thought to how could we make kids growing up more aware of the uh, habitat that they live in. It's beautiful here, and uh, there are a lot of very special native plants. And they, not a single child should grow up in Marin 
and not know of the basic plant communities that are here and develop some appreciation for them. So, and I think that works, you know, the, with the legislative work. Um, the Planning and Conservation League really struggles very hard to uh, hang on to the CEQA law. They're not easy. That there are people constantly. And the CEQA law, <coughs> excuse me, is the, the California Environmental Quality Act. Uh -huh. And when you do a project, uh, you are required to write an environmental impact statement in California. And, uh, and, and the developers are constantly trying, trying to change and soften and delete the, uh, the, the teeth in that. So um, the Planning and Conservation League spends a great deal of time trying to educate uh, people how to use CEQA, why it's important, and then in the legislator, legislature trying to keep people, the legislators from changing it, softening it. So that's something that we should be supporting. So how to do all that? <laughs> yes, that's, yes. Yeah. Any, any thoughts? Any thoughts about that? Well, um, yeah, I, I'm pretty excited that we have some new people coming into our chapter. Um, and I'm not quite sure who they are or what their interests are, but it does seem to me that we as a chapter could sit down and say, what's important? And, and, and what's important are, are getting input into the school programs and, and getting those kids educated. You know, if we did nothing but that, we'd be successful. Yeah. I'm not sure we're doing that. No, I don't think it's happened in, at the chapter level since Wendy Dreskin was mm -hmm. active. And she's still on the board. Is, she at least is still yeah. doing that, yeah. both as a volunteer um, and, and for pay, yeah. leading walks for families with young children, and then still helping helping continue the um, junior botanist program that she uh -huh. created. Um, so it's just not under our name, but certainly with our blessing. But, but it would be nice fun. to see more happening. If some, or we should be providing uh, teacher workshops. Yes. You know, why couldn't we do teacher workshops and, and things like that that would get the teacher? Because there's no way you could get to every student. No. Um, I mean, we, the teachers we, we, should, we should have articles in the newspaper okay. that, that, uh, that people would read and, and uh, pass along to their children. and inspire them to want to uh, to get out there and I mean the the parents don't know the plant communities that we're in so how can you expect them to insist that their children learn them and um, I, don't, I don't think you can mm -hmm. but we could we could make that a big issue in the county we could insert things into the county general plan that would uh, that would put a lot more emphasis on the natural world here in Marin so. Those are some of the things that I think we could do, but you know, <laughs> you can do what you can do in 24 hours. Yes. Yeah. So. So your experience in up until this, <clears throat> excuse me, up until this point, being involved with different environmental issues has been a path of serendipity and and knowledge and recognition for what you do by others and as far as being appointed to the commission and then getting involved in legislation and then doing some publishing it's it your awareness has unfolded as as your experience oh, yeah. has you learn, has you, learn. Developed. you learn yes you also uh, as you as you go through life as Kristen knows you, you learn where you personally can make change and, and where you see opportunities so uh, malt was certainly one of those moments, uh, forming malt, w which was a real spin-off from the Coastal Act. Uh, um, I, the Coastal Act has a strong platform for preserving agriculture, so that was just a natural, uh, that was just a natural uh, place to go. And then Ellen was such a wonderful friend, such a wonderful person, that um, we just took a run at it, and, and it worked. Uh, so, you know. Uh, how much fun was that? <laughs> uh huh. Uh, but that is the way things happen, where you have people that are looking for ways to make change, and uh, and, and 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 getting a general recognition of where change is needed, and and that's what our chapter could do more of. But we really haven't been in a position with the people that we've had to to do a lot more than we have. 
Yeah. But I think we're beginning to get to a place we where, might where we might think about it. Yeah. And, and maybe that's something that we should bring up at a board meeting and the, uh, get people thinking. Or have a special meeting. Mm -hmm. We could do that. Like yeah. a st these strategic planning meetings or yeah. retreats where you focus on that one mm -hmm. thing and have it be a brainstorming yeah. session. Yeah, we have some money. I mean, we could, we could really we could make a difference. Mm -hmm. I don't want to interrupt. If you, do you have a thought, Kristen, that mm -hmm. you want to? Uh, uh, so, then it, in how do you see management of the existing lands taking place here in Marin County, open space lands then that are dedicated to, you know, native plants? Yeah, I, I think we are uh, extremely lucky in, at, at the moment with uh, who is managing the lands. Um, I think Linda Dahl at the uh, Open Space District uh, is an extraordinarily talented person. So I'm very optimistic, but her problem is that she isn't given any money. And uh, the, the county is hurting, the state is hurting more than they thought they were going to be hurting. So Linda's resources are going to be very limited. That's an opportunity for us as a Native Plant Society to help her. Um, they have a uh, they have a naturalist who is very talented, uh, very frustrated, uh, and I, and I don't know how to alleviate any of his frustrations and uh, because his his position isn't supported. He doesn't adequately. he doesn't have an assistant, so he mm -hmm. can't do as much teaching as he would like to. But they that that that. Um, um, operation that, that that open space district does some very good teaching and very good work. Is, is, has there ever been a uh, any discussion about a, a grant to the, the Buck Fund or something in order to get money uh, to do these things? Well they're not giving grants anymore to uh, environmental organizations. They're, 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 they're heading their resources towards doing I, what I think the county has done with the human services that the county doesn't have enough money to do. So the Buck Institute is, uh, the, the Marine Community Foundation rather, is, uh, is taking over that role. I think it's a huge mistake, but um, they, they forgot to ask me. Oh, <laughs> right. And so, in your mind, or what you've seen, that there's, and we don't. This can be deleted too. Don't worry. But that's I don't right. want you to feel committed. Um, but so, do you you feel that that's probably is it that worth pursuing though? If there was uh, interest in in um, writing up a proposal or a, a countywide proposal to. Um, identify what areas need to be managed and what that would take to manage the areas and then fund it through? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I don't see a lot of money coming from the Marine Community Foundation for a while until they change their management. Uh, I, I think there's going to be, eventually there's going to be a revolt in this county, uh, but I, it's going to take time for people to get sufficiently annoyed. Um, so I don't think that's an avenue. Uh -huh. I, I think that uh, I think the Native Plant Society could augment what Dave Herlocker does uh, in some way, and I don't know exactly how, but we, we could do something cooperatively, and that would be psychologically very good for him. Mm -hmm. he, he would love to see Perhaps that leading, leading yeah. Uh, yeah. some walks. Yeah. You know. And there are people, there are young people that are, are I think, maybe could do that. I mean, our, our past chair of, of, the, of the chapter, you know, she or, or, the, or the other, I can't remember their Stacey name. Stacy or Jolie. Yeah, that, they're familiar with the plants, I think, aren't they? I think Jolie perhaps the more of the I mean, she gives a two. terrible thing on acorns. Her, uh, her thrust is uses of native plants. That's her actually her field and yeah, that's her yeah. profession well, we and so that of course has led a little uh, <laughs> to uh, some uh, controversy uh, on the board, uh, tensions uh, on the board, <laughs> but she's actually stepping off the, off the board. Oh, she's going off the board. Next year. Yeah. I think she may stay active in some background role in one of the committees yeah. and same with Stacy, she'll also be uh, probably staying well, on the conservation be, committee. Sure. No, I was thinking more in terms of some of the, of the actual for the Native Plant Society, and um, I think um, 
I think they're both very real in getting more education programs into schools. Um, and they're also psychological. I think we are a tremendous uh, psychological lift for both the open space district and the water district. Uh, they both have huge issues on their lands. And for them to be able to turn to the Native Plant Society for support in doing what they think is right. Exactly. But what the bicyclists or, 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 or but, other with, users. Or with invasive exotics. Yeah, yeah. Key, key point, right. Yeah. So I think that, I think we there serve we a real role have there. Been, have been helpful, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. I think so too. To a great extent. How, yeah. how, how can that continue, how can that role continue to be maintained? Well, it's interesting. We had a, we had a past board member named Joe. What was Joe Cohn. Joe Cohn who uh, started going out on Wilma's walks and, and this scruffy looking guy came on our walks and you know we're all sort of middle aged, middle class, regular looking people and here was Joe scruffy with hair all over and beard and you know we hoped he'd had a shower today and, um, and, uh, and he just kept coming. I mean I thought he'd be there once to see what was going on but he kept coming. Well he turned out, he got onto the board and he turned out to be our conscience. And he would lecture us about how we weren't turning out for meetings that the water district would have, for example, where the, the water district is desperate to be able to use herbicides to control some of the uh, weeds, some of the exotic weeds. And, uh, and, and Joe was our conscience. And so, you know, now we go to more of those meetings. Joe was only with us. He was sort of like a, he was sort of like a meteor <laughs> into our midst, and uh, and he died at a very early age. Just after we elected him president. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before he could even Chris, start. Chris, was Kristen so. was so relieved to have somebody come along and say they'd be president, and Joe said, I'll do it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm <laughs> Joe said, I'll be president of this very, very conservative middle class, mostly old people organization. It was, it was delicious. <laughs> And uh, so anyway, we miss Joe, but I, I think I think we remember his message. Absolutely, and, uh, that is, you have to participate. And so um, hopefully, hopefully we will. Hopefully, with new new younger people on the board, we will be more active. Uh, David Long, whom I'm hoping will come He's starting, terrific. yeah, as a vice president uh -huh. in support of of Amelia. So yeah. this is. This will be hopefully true <laughs> by the time <laughs> we elect them in January. Um, he, he. Um, Does he know the plans? He's he comes for, with a little bigger picture and and a visionary. You know, mm -hmm. a little more like Joe. You know, I think mm -hmm. he's got great. Idea. Plus, he has nuts and bolts. He's a lawyer, and so he has nuts and bolts, practical, um, and, and in um, skills to bring to it and. And then I've lost my thread there. So we're... Well, one of the things that used to happen uh, at the College of Marin was that, that um, uh, if you remember, Al Molino gave that wonderful course and there were many people, I mean, there were at least 20 people that went once a week for years. Uh, and when, when he retired, then Bob West picked it up and uh, then Wilma for a short time. And uh, I, think, I think Paul De Silva, um, could do that. Paul da Silva uh, um, d doesn't, you know, doesn't bring people in in quite the same way. So, uh, but that that's a source of educating people. About Absolutely, plants. and he is our education chair, and I think yeah. that role will expand. Mm -hmm. um, I think we should help him make that expand. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought what was done was a really, <clears throat> excuse me, a good idea. Sorry, um, about making a scholarship donation or a scholarship there were weren't there yes, a couple there scholarships were several funded scholarships. by the plant society yeah. through through was it through Paul but Paul was instrumental in writing those up and, and okay. publicizing them and and um, exactly making making those grants. and we gotta find out what happened with those grants too. Yes. Um, we gotta know what the results were. We did there was a report at one of the board meeting meetings as to who was awarded mm -hmm. those, but I think it would be nice if some of those yeah, wrote little, them. little uh, yeah. <laughs> articles for us, perhaps, yeah, to, I think, to, I, I to think say how it's used. So we, need, we need to remind yeah. remind ourselves to do that. Exactly. But uh, but both Amelia and um, David, uh, I think, are skilled and and interested in the in the modern media much more so than I, and would like to see even a, a chapter Facebook page because they see they that younger people are using Facebook as a way to to find out about 
current activities and issues in their fields of interest and and so they see that as a potential tool in addition to the website and possibly um, changing the formatting of that a little bit to to um, to try to reach more of the young young people and uh, so the, I think those are both going to be useful people going forward well I think that I think and we need to we need to as, a, as an organization focus on exactly that a strategic plan as to what the chapter should focus on because we do have some money to, uh, to, to give scholarships to uh, to do more but I, I think we need to enlarge an educational program that, that is probably multi-directional exactly yeah you know. that goes in as many directions as we can yeah. sustain or, or or start the forum does a uh, uh, a day one day for their the environmental for, forum the environmental right. forum right mm -hmm. and they look at plant communities uh, for that one day but that's just a one just day. one day and uh, mm -hmm. and so um, we need we need we need the groups we need to replace Wilma we need to get somebody to lead uh, um, wildflower walks and Doreen is wonderful because she knows all the plants better than anybody but she doesn't really teach them as well she's uh, you know, she she knows them, and we'll say their names. But unless you're standing close to her, you can miss her name, miss the name, and so on. She's very modest, and she and she mumbles. She's shy. She's, <laughs> she's shy. shy. She's very shy. And I think uh, Brad Kelly is shy uh -huh. too. Yeah, you know, he's he's certainly led a lot of hikes or found leaders for a lot uh -huh. of walks Does he and know so the forth. Plants? Yes, he knows he the plants. Yeah. Well, that that's terrific. So we should make the most of him. Absolutely. So it's a kind of a combination then of personality types, though, too, or and interests and timing. Well, knowledge is one knowledge. thing, uh, but be, the ability to teach to the, knowledge the knowledge is, is, uh, is another thing. And, and Wilma was superb at both, um, and so uh, she she just can't do it anymore. Uh, she's almost ninety. Right. Um, so um, we need to replace her. That was a wonderful thing to go out every week for uh, three months uh, to a different place, and I mean there were a lot of people that did learn the plants. And she had walks geared both for advanced people and and for beginners. She had the Wednesday wildflower walks and the Tuesday taxonomy trips, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of overlap, of course, of people mm -hmm. on both of those. But but that way she reached the broadest possible range of so there was a combination of, skills. of of more fun and then and then an, or introductory an, and, and, introductory and, and, and more advanced, advanced. Okay. where mm -hmm. the, on the taxonomy trips you might actually sit down and use uh -huh. a key, key uh -huh. to key things out yeah. yeah yeah and and the people who went along changed over the years uh, a lot I mean I remember when uh, uh, well, anyway, there, there there was an era where where we just wanted to key everything out because we were learning how to right. do it. Right, right. <laughs> it was great fun. Right, I uh, I think of the key and the fact that this floor was updated, mm -hmm. um, not too recent, not not that, too far in the past. It's a huge, a, wonderful event, and it's given a common reference for everyone to relate to. And it's then okay, we we have that. Now, how do we? Now we need to get out. And yeah. Use it. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. That's what I'm sensing, and we're in kind of this um, limbo land because of technology, kind of leaping forward, and then changing how we communicate or changing how we organize ourselves. Yeah. So, how yeah. do we? How do we manage this transition? Well, it it so, is hard because uh, there are a number of factors in this, and that is that. Uh, women tend to work more now than yes. they used to. Yes. I mean, a lot of the people that came out on those Wednesday walks was, uh, they were not they were not working people, so they had the time. Now it's harder to find young people that have the time uh, like that. And the, field and, trip, the and the field trip days have shifted from weekdays yes. to weekend days yes. to reflect that and try to draw as many people as possible. And I don't know, I, I don't, I don't th think the attendance on the field trips has been as high as, as it, it was during Wilma's yeah. tenure, but... I, I think people's time, uh, yeah. their, their, their time is used differently. I mean, there's so much more time eaten up with uh, 
with, with, with technology. Yeah, with their toys. Right. And you would think so, that would be a time, it's supposed to be a time saver, but in the right. end it's somehow right. backfired and right. in fact consumed. has yes. consumed more time. Right. And, and in the meantime, we have our la we have our lands evolving more and more and this, you know, this, the invasives are more and more present. Exactly. So, well, it, it's a how very can they keep a handle thing. on this? <laughs> One of the things that uh, at the other end that you worry about is that uh, a lot of money now is going to uh, DNA studies and so on. Now, the the field biology has disappeared out of the universe. Oh, yes. you practically and, need a microscope to. Yeah, and so as a result, so that's key. Uh, that's exactly kind of what I'm talking about. And, and so as a result, it really is uh, that it, we, we're we're getting into a very risky area where the general public has no knowledge of the names yes, of the people exactly. names and the that's me. science. Yeah end of it they are they are into the DNA and all the technological parts of and so the worry that we have is that no one will be able to go out into the field and find these animals that they are interested in because um, you know they, they want the DNA of this and this organism but nobody knows where to find them right yeah. or even what a plant looks like after it's gone to seed yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so and so in our chapter Doreen is probably the one person uh -huh. you know who is keeping up with these man changes. I worry so about Doreen because I look at her and I think, God, if you break your leg or you twerk your yeah. ligament, um, yes. you know, th this area is really in deep trouble. Yeah, it, because otherwise it's not so well represented. Well, Amelia, I think, will increasingly perhaps fill that role as long as she stays around. Yeah, and, and she a does know the plants. She's a botanist by training and she's that's her job. What they have is the head, the head botanist out in, in uh, Point Reyes Seashore is uh, a wetland scientist. She doesn't know the plants. Oh, Amelia does. Yeah, that well, is her area great. of expertise. So I'm very pleased that she's that she's as active as she is on the board, and will yeah. be more so, I hope. And um, and then also the new Jepson manual that is coming out, increasingly, you know, with name changes, whole family changes, and so forth. That uh, we're Come going in. to have a program on the very subject of and how what that will mean for us. As Thank field and amateur botanists going forward. Thank you. Okay, that, that's right. Okay, so uh, what did, so there's going to be a new say that again. A new Jepson manual. Yeah, that uh, we just got the notice that it's uh, that it's at the printers, and should be out momentarily. Going to be expensive. Yeah, nobody's going to buy it. Apparently, right. if you buy it on Amazon, not that I particularly wish to support Amazon over our local bookstores, there's a 25 percent. Well, the, I think that. I think the press will. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's Jepson will get yeah. a 20% discount. Okay. At the so. East Bay chapter meeting last night, it was mentioned that there would be a $25 discount. Uh, what is the price of the. It's going to be 200 and something. Okay. So that is about a 10%. So the, it is that 10% discount. I think the. The art of field botany is. Well, the people that are knowledgeable in. Uh, on, on the plants and the animals. I mean, true, true in other fields too, in, for, for butterflies, for yes. all kinds of invertebrates. Um, um, the, the people that are knowledgeable about those organisms are, are becoming fewer. The colleges are more into the technological aspects of DNA and, um, and, and that kind of science rather than the field, field science. So field scientists are becoming uh, few and far between. And so it's being felt at the universities, it's being felt in all of the agencies. Uh, when Jim Shivak was here, he managed to, there are 17 national forests in California. And when Jim Shivak was here, uh, he managed to have a good botanist in each and every one of those 17 forests. That's not true anymore. Uh, they don't have, they, they can't find the skilled botanists to have in their national forests. So, so uh, our, our forests, are, you're going to begin to see decisions made that are really not, not favorable to the organisms that are in the national forest, not by intent, but by ignorance. Um, so it, 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 it's a real problem. It's a real problem. Um, Kristen, do you have anything that you'd like to, Christine? No, but I'm, I'm <laughs> glad to see this brought out and, mm. and discussed, and I don't know that we have any 
no, no, no it. answers. No answers to that one. one. But then the chapter as a, a role of, of say, educator. education, educator, mm -hmm. and facilitator, would you say maybe facilitator, helping to introduce the average public to the beauty of the flora that we have here, the chapter the chapter here in the county and the chapters in California are actually then maybe poised to be in a position where they can help direct or well I think that's what facilitate we should do. I think this chapter the is, knowledge is, is, the field the, botany knowledge obligation is to really enhance the level of botanical information yes I, I think that should be our absolute goal and you know, we haven't had that on the front burner. We haven't really thought about it and talked about it before. No. But, and, uh, and with these changes in taxonomy and nomenclature and so forth, our existing guides are going to be quickly out of date. Yes. So perhaps one of the roles we can fulfill would be to, to self-publish, you know, as a chapter, publish guides that are up to date in those regards, um, but still accessible and useful for the for the lay public, mm -hmm. and I think that's what we'll all have to do at the local level because the flora of California is so diverse and regional. And right here, of course, it's very complex and rich, and 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 with all the guides we have, we haven't really an, an easily easily accessible for the beginner well-illustrated guide to our local flora that we could use as a tool. Well, for example, um, we ought to have, we ought to be publishing little booklets that are called Discovering the Wildflowers of Marin County. Yes. Discovering the trees of Marin County. Yes, It used to be exactly. that father would take his son out and, you know, make sure that the son knew the names of all the trees on their property. I don't think that happened so much anymore. I, I, uh, the, we sponsored a book that a, a retiring um, National Park Ranger wrote, and he said that you, that he doesn't see out on the John Muir Trail the families that he used to. No. So families aren't doing that. Families are much more, you know, with television and with uh, iPads and so on. P people don't spend their time out in nature the way they As used to. Much. So therefore, the pride in knowing the names of the trees that your dad taught you, that, that's a passive Disappearing. You know. Yeah. So yeah. I think, I think uh, small guides of that nature I think would we should really be something very useful yeah. and would be an essential tool if we're to expand the uh -huh. educational outreach to schools or to yes, the public that, again. So we should do something so that would be a place to start. The, principal, uh, the trees in your community, for yes. example, or the wildflowers in your community, and every school should have those and be teaching their kids that. Yeah, yeah. and then one for the plant communities for the next <laughs> grades up, <Yeah. laughs> where right. you integrate the yeah. components. I think that would be fun to put together a book like that. It would be great fun. And, and it would be great I'll be on that our, committee. <laughs> yeah, that would be great for our chapter to do, and that would be a, a, a model for the state. Yes. Uh, for the other chapters. For other the, uh, chapters. The state mm -hmm. to do for their community. I, I think because it really has help. to be chapter generated. The, the floras do vary so, oh, and each, so each, dramatically you know. from area to what area. What would be the process for that? Oh, that would be hard. We'd get around a table and we'd sit down and say, "All right, what are we going to put in this book?" And we'd make a plant list, and then uh, and then Doreen and Kristen would uh, provide the illustrations, and we Doreen the photographs. I think a photographic guide. It would yeah. take me forever to do any drawings. I might be able to augment with a few. But you have a lot. Drawings. I do have a fair yeah. number, but not. Not a good issue. I love the mix of the drawings yeah, and the photographs. Yeah, they could be so, so we'll just put it together. Now, I have yeah. a wonderful designer that would easily put this together. We have the money in the chapter to publish it, we'll, or we could get a donor to, uh, to, to, to publish it. I, I could help with basic drawings. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think we need any illustrative material. We've got a lot. I, I think what we need is somebody to crack the whip and make us do it. <laughs> that could be a wonderful role. Well, Renee and I were already talking at the last board meeting about getting together a little Is that publication right? oh, good. committee. So it's good. just stating. Oh, and, wonderful. And so Renee would be yeah. the name to add to. Yeah. Well, I, to I can get them published. I mean, mm -hmm. I can do all that so easily. Um, 
uh, but it, it's it, it's getting it's it, it's getting the, it, it's just getting together to do yes. it is really the hardest part. But I think the most fun part too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll be a very exciting, yeah. that be positive fun? project. And Marin would be so much fun, with, yeah. you know, to do the communities. We we have a community plant community guide, so the writings are there. the writings basically done yeah. exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Well, what a good thing you did to come here this morning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is why we like talking in person as opposed yeah, to right. just the email. Thank you. Well, yeah. that's the value of actually coming together. Absolutely. So, thank Isn't you it? very much. And then maybe this joie de vivre can uh, yeah. continue on. So, yeah. so we, are, we are a committee established right now to okay. put out a, a thing from Marin County uh, for the schools, for the people, for the Water district to go. I mean, we, we'll give it away to anybody that will take Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And maybe it can be almost like a little folio in the form of uh, John Muir Law's little nature guides to the San Francisco Bay region, where he has individual ones and then they're oh, they can be bought separately right. or they can be a set. Right. And together they kind of cover the natural right. history as a whole. Yes. That would be wonderful. And we could do the same with the flora. We could yes. have in sections. We could have wildflowers, shrubs, trees, or trees and shrubs maybe together, and then and then the plant communities one and Yay. you know, make yeah. a triptych but that would have each have its own integral part. Yes. And so maybe the the you know the plant ID ones could be a little more easy to use for the beginner and then and then the plant communities one mm -hmm. that pulls it all together be, you know, one step more yes. fast or yes. you know yes. scientific Pe perhaps kind to kind of lead people on yes. to the next Yes. to the next level. And those, I think, together we could uh, yeah, put okay. something together. Yeah. Very perfect. Fun. Let's just do it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> All righty, thank you very much. Ooh, this is exciting. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>